Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Red Pill Tamales. It is one of the most loved and hated podcasts. It is, it's been called more polarizing than Kanye, more polarizing than Trump himself, more polarizing than ketchup on tamales. I'm your host, Chingo Bling. My co-host, producer Rob. What's up, everybody? Is in the building. He's the one that makes all the magic happen. Puts all the clips together. Make sure the patrons are taken care of. Make sure the YouTube is just stacked with clips. Yeah, okay. that way all you got to do is interact with your fans and uh, engage with the people that Thank are in you. the comments saying esto y el otro and whatever. Even though the majority are starting to get more on the positive side, you still have the stragglers. Well, you know, because I don't blocked everybody else. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, we got some tour dates coming up. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. It is a Biden miracle, and the economy is opening back up. We're headed to beautiful, sunny, free Florida. We have Naples, Florida, this Wednesday, February 10th. And then we have West Palm Beach, Florida, this Thursday, February 11th. I've got allergies right now, but uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I know they got some shit out there in Florida that's going to knock it out. Do, do we want to no, guess what it is? Don't no, start no, assuming. Okay, okay. Don't start assuming. You know, there's a lot of shit out there. They got bath salts. They got a lot of shit. Um, but this morning, I pissed off a lot of people because, you know, you, as much as my wife tells me, hey, um, some people are thinking that you're like really getting obsessed with politics. And I'm like, and? <laughs> so I'm like, all right, all right, I'll shut up. I'll shut up. I'll leave it alone. But it's just so juicy, man. Biden is doing so many things that's giving us so much content. How can we not talk about it? Yeah. I'm a professional shit talker. We're only what? How many days into his uh, administration? Ooh, I, I lost track, but it's, I mean, it hasn't even been a full month yet. Not even. So it's a couple weeks and um, I just couldn't resist. I was like, man, I'm going to post this clip about how he's putting kids in cages, except he's calling them overflow facilities. And uh, people got real, real butt hurt. They're just like, oh, I, I'm here for comedy and, and I'm not here for this propaganda. It's like, bro, I'm literally calling out the propaganda. And I don't know if they go on, uh, you know, the leftist celebrity people's pages and, and tell them, I don't want to hear your politics. Probably not. They don't. Not if they agree with them. Why, why would they, right? Yeah. Right now, everything that's going on, what... What excites you, and I use that kind of in like in a ironic way, but what are you most interested in with what's going on right now? Because there's, I mean, you could pick and choose, right? Like, I personally am, I'm becoming more and more fascinated as the days go on with everything that they're calling the climate crisis. Like, mm. we keep hearing climate crisis, and we've heard it for, for years now, mm -hmm. probably a decade or so. Mm -hmm. And the way that it's being escalated to a crisis and the importance of this, and this has to be done through executive orders and blah, 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 that's starting to be more and more fascinating as time goes on, along, obviously, with the immigration subject, because we're so close to the border, but those are, like, my main two. And then the, the energy stuff, you know? The Green New mm -hmm. Deal and the energy jobs and the windmills and the, they'll find other gigs, you know, the oil mm -hmm. workers. Like, ah, that's really frustrating. Frustrating, but yeah. I'm still fascinated. Well, what's fascinating about what you mentioned, which is the climate crisis, quote unquote, that's what they call it. And everything else you just mentioned is that to me, what the glue that holds all that together, 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 <clears throat> you know, we're down here in Texas. We <laughs> say together. You got to get her. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> get her done. Um, it's propaganda. Yeah. To me, the persuasion and the way they frame it you know, the way they contextualize, the way they pitch it to people. Because climate crisis, that term is meant to be alarming. Um, and just like the gun control debate, they use kids to hide behind. So, for example, you got Greta promoting and tweeting shit that they're telling her to tweet because it, it had already came out that they're consulting her they're like giving her talking points you know what i'm saying who's gonna be catching a lot more shit from people online because she's 18 now oh good yeah oh yeah you're not you're not a little girl no more greta yeah. um so that whole climate crisis i think if and when people start to if they desire most people don't do a deep dive mm -hmm. most people don't say okay um climate crisis all right so what is biden's administration proposing so they're trying to shift everybody they're trying to make us all have teslas they want us to go green they want electric vehicles they want to build windmills you know so on and so forth if you do a deep dive you start to look at okay where do these batteries for these cars get made you know what i mean or who's going to get these windmill jobs 
you know, what companies, is it a company in Germany? Is it Asia? Is it China? You know, are we simply just exporting more jobs? I mean, that's how I see it, you know, because I've looked into uh, both sides of the debate. And for what it seems like, a lot of the smart people that I follow that are into economics and understand persuasion and all that, they'll tell you. They'll be like, Paris Climate Accord sounds cool, but it's really just a way to give China and everybody else an upper hand and let them uh, continue to pollute the world. Meanwhile, we're United States getting overregulated. We shipping off more jobs. And uh, and really, I think France wasn't even able to uh, hold their end of the deal. Like, I think even France, like the shit's named after them. Mm. And they weren't even able to meet their uh, little climate standards. So, Greta, get off the boo-boo. <laughs> yeah, either she is or just about to be 18. Because I've heard some other independent journalists say that, you know, she's going to catch the wrath of the internet once that 18th birthday comes around. Because... There's somebody behind there pulling the strings, and if it's you can't you know tell them nothing, you're gonna tell her something because she's the one saying it. But I mean, even if she gets, let's just say, quote unquote, people tell her off on Twitter or whatever. I mean, is she still gonna have the entire mainstream media propping her up, amplifying her voice, using her as like the poster child of, listen to this little girl. She's she's trying to talk to you old politicians, and y- y'all ruining her. Her childhood and this next generation and y'all gonna kill us all unless you give us all the money and give us all the power and all the control that's basically what it is yeah it's kind of like this is the biggest deal out and it's like okay cool let's talk about it could we get some carbon scrubbers um you know there's there's a lot of innovation can we talk about generation five nuclear plants can we discuss nuclear as an option like a whole bunch of stuff like yeah we could do it. we could discuss it But it doesn't have to be, uh, everybody, it's an emergency. Listen to Greta and give us all the power and all the money. And we're going to bankrupt the country. Because arguably, that's what the Green New Deal would do. I want to say right now before I forget, next week, we're going to have two guests. And since we're talking about climate, I do have somebody that I want to get on that's a climate expert. So we can talk the majority of the time about that. But next week, we'll have, uh, I mentioned it in the last episode, uh, at Wake Up With Linda, who's an entrepreneur. She's in Florida, uh, knows all about, you know, the conservative values coming from somewhere where it was more socialized and arguably communist type of government. So that'll be interesting. And then where is she from? I have to look it up again. I forgot last time. I think it was Venezuela. And I think I said uh, maybe Cuba, but I'll get my facts straight before she comes on. Okay. And uh, we might even pull up some of her stuff on the next Patreon episode just to uh, have you react to some of the Vice um, footage that they had done, the little show they put together with her and some other people. But anyway, and then uh, the, the Patreon exclusive will end up being uh, Chris Irons, who is a financial economist type of a, a character who's done some work with big publications and companies that you would all know, but has gone on to his own to do a lot of really cool podcasting and blogs and articles on the finance crisis and what's going on because that right now is also up there with like mm-hmm. bitcoin and dogecoin and this collapse and what's happening while it's money being printed and how do you make sense of it all this guy is such a straight shooter and it just like an every man that he makes anybody that even if you don't know anything about it understand what's going on well yeah i want to I, I need to know about bitcoin because my boy frank been telling me about bitcoin for damn near 10 years and i'm always like bro you you on i don't know what you want i don't know what kind of adderall you're on yeah man it takes I, i've also been looking into it for the better part of 10 years but i keep I, I like lose interest or i forget or it like loses uh attention from the mainstream and then you just forget about it i i've had a coinbase i've had a, a wallet right a coinbase wallet or whatever they call it for about 10 years and i i bought five dollars what no 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 go ahead it's the second time today i hear about coinbase yeah well I, i've had my coinbase since probably about 10 years ago and i bought like five dollars worth of uh Bitcoin, and I looked at the other day as it keeps, you know, going to the fucking moon, as everybody's saying. Mm -hmm. And I think I have like 120 bucks, and I was like, okay, that's pretty cool, but still doesn't. I don't have any of the base knowledge to go and try to say, am I going to mine for this stuff? Am I going to buy it on an exchange? Where am I getting this information, or or, you know, uh, I guess projections from? Well, I guess the key would be to diversify, right? Like, not put all your eggs in that basket. Oh, yeah. But also. Like right now, I ain't got no eggs in that basket. Yeah. <laughs> and then you see Tesla invested like whatever it was. I think it was 1.9. In Bitcoin? In Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. And also said they were going to start taking it as currency for their cars. Yeah. So. I, I heard that that was very significant. That huge. The fact that Elon Musk says, 
you can literally buy our our car, which is a real good, with Bitcoin, which some people didn't really look at as real currency. But him making that statement, um, pretty much what's the word like solidifies yeah Bitcoin even more or crypto it, in, in general yeah crypto. So it's almost like he damn near just made crypto more of a thing he did and then he also was tweeting about dogecoin which i didn't know what it was until recently but it was like some a meme of a dog that ended up on some uh, cryptocurrency and it's also like starting to catch traction and like going to the moon stock wise but chris irons actually had a lot of good takes on it where it's like he's propping up this 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 uh, currency that you know, it doesn't have any kind of, it doesn't have a place in the market and it's literally like, it's make believe off of a meme and blah, blah, blah. So I can't wait to just get his take on some of this shit, but mm -hmm. just to kind of have a better understanding of where the dollar's going, as I think he's putting it like, it looks like a lot of people are trying to get out of the dollar right now all of a sudden, which people have been saying that for decades, right? Buy gold, buy silver, uh -huh. buy whatever, buy precious metals. And now people are buying a lot of crypto and investing in that. It's just like, what the fuck's well, going on? Well, I can't wait to pick his brain to learn more about it you know because uh there's a lot there's so much happening so much important shit is happening that affects our lives and we really ain't got time to do a deep dive on any on all of that shit. i know we gotta have experts that know what the fuck they're talking about Está cabrón. Está cabrón. but speaking of shit that's more on the light end did you watch super bowl yeah i was in and out i was kind of peeping it did you were you, were you i mean i know you probably didn't care because i didn't but were well, you going I, for a particular side? I was, I was going for Brady. Okay. I was going for Brady, and uh, I was trying to see what was good with the commercials. And my antenna are on heightened alert. Like, I am I view things through the lens of, is this propaganda? How does this... Is this China trying to... Who, who wrote this script? What ad agency is this? What stood out the most? Uh, obviously, the Jeep commercial. Yeah. And that and the one about um, the NFL is going to give $250 million to cure racism, mm. which is weird because humans, our brains are pattern recognition machines. So we're all biased. And even if you cured everybody of bias and prejudice and racism, the next crop of babies that are born are going to be born with a pattern recognition brain. And it's going to start all over again. But that's neither here nor there. Um the Jeep commercial, first of all, I heard a few different people's, like it came up this morning with John Burke. Shout out to John Burke. Uh, shout out to uh, Shell Shock CBD. You're going to hear them as a, uh, as a sponsor coming up. But anyway. Oh, and what else did you do? People have been asking about, the, you did something with the Lexit War Room, yes. was it? Yeah, Lexit War Room. That was last night. Um, I was just making sure that my data and my buffering, my my throttle my shit didn't get throttled i was just hoping my shit wouldn't glitch yeah so like last night after the interview i went ahead and did an update on my phone yeah. i was like i can't be having no glitches because this morning i had to use skype so last night it was Streamyard. this morning it was skype mm. and it's like always something different i'm like yeah. fuck zoom shit the desktop oh laptop it's not finding my webcam fuck but anyway i've been hearing different people's uh point of view about like the jeep commercial and all this stuff mm. long story short i was watching it and, and i already knew i'm watching i'm like okay all right so this is jeep all right they to me they haven't been on some like woke far left agenda they haven't been like to on my radar preaching a whole bunch of wokeism right right or whatever you know what i'm saying no, where, like it's a, where it's like social justice warrior and you know white man is the devil and, and and we're all victims that type of thing so i'm watching a jeep commercial and i'm like okay there's a little church out in the middle of the country you know a little chapel and you know it's about cowboys and churches and and it's bruce springsteen mr uh born in the usa i was like all right this fool's from new jersey he's not from the center but that's cool i was like and he's been at every democrat thing ever he's always performing you know, he loved him some Biden, and he got a little earring and shit, and he looks funny in a cowboy hat. So I'm like, okay, where's this going? In a diner that he would never step foot in. A what? In, in a diner oh, that he would never step foot in. It's like, all right, I get it. It's, it's entertainment. It's a commercial. I get it. It's it's supposed to be kind of, you know, fake-ish. And now, you know, they're calling for everybody to unite. You know, meanwhile, I, I, I don't know. I don't follow Bruce Springsteen on Twitter, but I'm pretty sure he's just like, unite our way, you know, unite as in shut the fuck up and agree and obey or uh, your, your, your whole side is impeached. 
we're going to crucify Trump and impeach the whole side, one half of the country. Yeah. So I just found it odd. I'm like, all right, Jeep. Okay. You probably, if I was in the room, you know, if I was part of the uh, think tank for that one, I would have raised my hand and said, does it have to be Bruce Springsteen? Only because half of the country is already going to be dubious about this dude because he's just so hardcore, you know, mainstream, n- official narrative type of dude. Okay, let's play the scenario. All right, uh, Mr. Bling, yes. Well, who, who, yes, what, what, what's your concern? Uh, should it, does it have to be Bruce Springsteen? I mean, the boss, you know, it's the boss. Who, yeah, else, who else do you want? Well, look, man, we're trying to sell Jeeps. Um, could we think of somebody else? Like, man, I don't know. Uh, obviously, you can't use... Um, Mel Gibson, because he done did a whole bunch of anti-Semitic <laughs> type of shit, so he's off the list. Okay, who do you else you thinking? I mean, you know, you got Sam Jackson, but then some people are going to be like, why it always got to be black? You know, some people might be on that shit. Like, every commercial got to be, you know, trans, black, something, transgender, some shit, you know. Are you not a fan of The Boss? <laughs> They just keep pounding it into you. Like, it's got to be Bruce Brinstein. Is that his nickname, The Boss? Yeah, and apparently he calls himself that and talks in third person. Like, he's just Ah, a really out there guy. He's like, you know, The the Boss. boss. (laughs) No one's ever, you've never hired anybody. You've never, you know, you've never, uh, no one's ever referred to you as The Boss. You referred yourself as Boss in third person. It's it's fucking weird. I I know this dude, and he he runs a comedy club, and he loves Bruce Springsteen. So I'm going to give Bruce Springsteen a a little bit of a pass. But, um... But anyway, the overall messaging was like the middle of the country unite and there's just one red star in the middle and it's like reunite. And I I just, I guess I was already expecting to hear that sentiment throughout these commercials. And and that was really the main one that was pushing that. Like we need to come back together now, now that Orange Man Bad is out. And, you know, they they weren't that obvious with it. Like they didn't literally say, now that we got the, the racist Nazi out of the house, dude, you know, we can move on. On its face, it, it told a good, compelling story, right? It probably tugged at some heartstrings for some people, but unless you've been living under a rock, I don't think you could just take that commercial for what they intended it to be and what it may have came off to a lot of people because there's so much nonsense going on every single day all around us, right? And especially through the screens that we constantly watch, phone, TV, whatever. And... They want to pitch the reunited states, you know that whole yeah, that yeah, whole yeah, idea. Yeah, it's yeah. like, come on, man. Let's reunite now. This has been the most chaotic twelve months of, of a lot of our lives. I mean, the chaos you just described has really just fucked up the game in terms of marketing jeeps. Like, I bet people in these think tanks and these advertising agencies were like, oh, "Fuck! All right, so are we gonna address the elephant in the room? Are we gonna talk unity, or what are we doing?" Because it's a freaking pandemic still. The economy's all fucked up. People just lost more jobs just a week in, thanks to uh, you know Biden's pin. And there's so much uncertainty, you know, division. People at each other's throats. So it just makes it hard to promote stuff, plan stuff. Um, like what? You know, I understand that they're. Ce- I think they're celebrating 80 years. I think it was Jeep. Jeep is like celebrating 80 years of manufacturing, or whatever. Uh-huh. Uh, but they didn't advertise any Jeeps. Like they had two like 60s CJ or YJ Jeeps in there as the ad, and it was just like a. It was just a almost like a. And it was a long commercial too. I think it was like two minutes, two plus minutes. Super fucking expensive, I can imagine. But they're just like lecturing to the people. Who are watching this game and probably a lot of them tuned out during the season anyway like mm-hmm. most sports right they just like fuck this but super bowl we're gonna watch it. it's america's pastime whatever and then you hear that from jeep like that's well god, fuck, god well, damn it maybe maybe i'm just ultra sensitive at the moment because if i hadn't if i hadn't peeped everything that i peeped throughout the year 2020 you know i probably wouldn't be so uh alert and on edge I, it probably would have just went over my head like honestly if that commercial had had came out i mean shit the past four or five years you, you probably couldn't even been then right because trump polarized everything but let's just say you know if it's in the 80s 90s or whatever early 2000s and that ad is running you wouldn't think much of it it's like mm-hmm. oh bruce bruce springsteen okay country western type of little vibe it's like desert and desolate and oh classic american whatever is jeep american or yeah okay i, I don't know who owns a daimler or chrysler or somebody but um but you know i think now considering all the variables 
and and the way people are feeling and some people are i guess like maybe like me i'm just watching these commercials just ready to be mad like ooh, bitch <laughs> let me find out i mean that might be part of it right where yeah. I'm, I'm already coming in primed to assume these motherfuckers are gonna be on some hypocritical preachy ass bullshit well you're not wrong though like you're not wrong and the the unfortunate or the crazy part about it is that you can explain that to somebody who did have the last 12 months go over their head and they'll the only thing they can say to you is like what no you're crazy man what are you talking about just a jeep commercial like i mean in a way it kind of was because it was very subtle in a way it's kind of like well what does bruce what does bruce springsteen have to do with politics it's like well nothing really except He's like all for the left. He's just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey man, if you try, if you on the left, you trying to throw a party, quinceanera, bar mitzvah, call Bruce Springsteen. He'll do it for you. If your last name is Biden, he'll be there right alongside J Lo and Despacito. And then it didn't help that you know, leading up to the show, you got Tom Brady who's walking through the tunnels and uh, didn't have a mask on, right? Mm-hmm. And these these nobodies, but somehow catch attention on Twitter, tweet out why Tom Brady got to be a mask hole, you know? Why didn't he use his platform? to uh to uh encourage people to be responsible with their mask wearing and then they have like a side by side of Mahomes who had his big ass shades on and a big ass mask on so they tweeted it with the side by side yeah well and that was just like that was mild because you had others uh, other I, I use air quotes journalists yeah. that are like um we can't su- like fall all out like you can't support the, the this maga loving blah 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 you know talking about brady we have to support you know the whatever the uh, the uh, fucking not the superior but mahomes but like whatever he was to kaepernick i can't think of the word but mm-hmm. successor i guess you could say almost how, how was he kaepernick's successor and that's what i'm saying he's really not but that's just how they phrased it like they just want to bundle them in together because it's like kind of really? a guy of color yeah but they're trying to frame it as this dude got a little bit of, you know, it, it's he got a little bit of sauce in his coffee. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't just it ain't just milk. It's just it's like horchata. <laughs> it's horchata with a drop of chocolate milk. Dude, it was just they're making all these wacky comparisons, and they're one of them's also was like, uh, I, I hope I can find the tweet here in a second, but it's like, uh, we're we just gonna, you know praise brady for another super bowl when the nfl has not yet recognized and apologized one of the greatest quarterbacks of our time colin kaepernick for blah 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 neil for it i was like whoa 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 debatable he was he was benched for the backup he was never that great the list goes on it's just like man dude it's really bizarre nike got uh concentration camp uyghurs making the nikes and shit and, <laughs> and they cut they cut kaepernick is he muslim kaepernick yeah you would think with that nose, but I'm not sure. Well, he should be offended. No, he's he's um I know he was raised by white folk. Okay. But um I don't know if he's Muslim or what, but if so, he should be very offended as to uh where Nike gets their stuff made, which is, you know, Chinese Muslims in them camps. He's just worried about where that check's coming from. Exactly. So man, look here, bro. These folks on Twitter that were uh, I mean, I get it, man. People love a narrative. People love to see like it's 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 the uh, you know it's the mask hole versus the responsible leader example. Yeah. Okay. I mean, was Tom Brady within six feet of anybody when he was walking without a mask? In that picture, I don't think he was. He all he's doing is exhaling goat oxygen. Like, <laughs> you should be you should be happy. Tom ain't have a mask on. Get you some of that goat exhale exhalation carbon dioxide. I was trying to find that tweet. That's the greatest carbon dioxide of all time. And I was never even really a big Tom Brady fan, but once I heard about, okay, this is 10th time there. He done won, what, six or seven? This is the seventh one. He's so, been in 10. So he's been there 10 times. Everybody was giving the coach and the team all the credit, and then they were like, this dude's old, and they traded him off to the Bucks. Like, eh, we still got the coach and the team. Well, the coach ain't doing shit, is Nope. It? I was never a Brady fan. My brother is, and I always talk shit. And it wasn't until all this shit, he was getting all his backlash that I was like, all right, I'm rooting for Brady. Yeah. And this tweet, so let me read real quick. As as we approach another Tom Brady Super Bowl, let's remember he's friends with Trump and has endorsed Republicans and their policies. While, and and now it's highlighted, one of the greatest quarterbacks of our generation, Colin Kaepernick, had his career derailed for kneeling during the national anthem. Hashtag hypocrisy. This person has lost their mind. Okay. All right. 
I'm going to need you to break that tweet down for me one more time. I, I'll read it one more time, and I'm going to cut in. Okay. This is from uh, Sam- us, yeah. Samantha Polino. She's verified, too, so she must be somebody important, right? As we approach another Tom Brady Super Bowl, let's remember he's friends with Trump and has endorsed Republicans and their policies. Stop. Okay. And so what? You're not allowed to be cool with Trump and endorse conservative or Republican or libertarian or Democrat or like... Since when, since when, I guess because of the media and the propaganda, but since when is it evil to show love to Republicans? Golly, man, I thought this was America. Like, what What do y'all think? Like, some people really think anybody conservative or open-minded towards Trump or Republican or what? I mean, pobrecitos are libertarians. Like, people don't know enough about libertarians to call them racist Nazis. Yeah. But if Trump had gone libertarian, eesh, pobrecitos libertarians. Yeah. They'd have been like, the party of racism. <laughs> All right. And it continues. Let's yeah. break it down further. While one of the greatest quarterbacks of our generation, Colin Kaepernick. Is he really? His, absolutely not. Arguably, really, debatably, really. His career derailed for derailed. kneeling during the national anthem. So I guess the narrative is nobody wanted to hire him because he was speaking up on behalf of injustice that's the narrative right right but uh, shit i mean i guess a lot of these teams he ain't the only quarterback right no so a lot of these teams got to weigh all that shit out like okay how much money are you going to charge me how old are you what's your record are you going to mesh well uh with the team um, are you going to create backlash for my team and fuck up my jersey sales and my stadium ticket sales and my concession stand sales? Yep. Are you going to, um, you know, how is the city going to embrace you? Are they going to be excited that we're bringing Kaepernick or are you just going to further divide the shit? Dude, it's a fucking business, right? And this is what, this is what I don't appreciate. I don't appreciate a lot of things, but this is a, the dumbest thing of, of, of most is that people are coming at these businesses with their Again, we're using the word woke here in several different ways, but they're woke bullshit. And let's use our own quarterback here. I say our own because we're from Houston. Deshaun Watson. Have you seen his latest news? What do you do? So he he wants to get out of being the Texans quarterback, right? And let me just give you the gist of it. The, The gist is that he wants out from Houston because... The Texans owner does not do enough for social justice causes. That that's his reason. That's his reasoning. Okay, look, man, look, look, look. At the base level of what's going on here with you playing the game of football as arguably a pretty decent quarterback in 2021, you're asking a businessman to do more for social causes or you want out of your contract when all he's trying to do is run a business. Who who owns the Texans? Uh, is it the McNair family? Yeah, that was my guess. McNair. Okay. And what else? What else does McNair own? I mean, investment firms. Uh, I think real estate. Okay. Well, maybe maybe Deshaun is ill advised. Perhaps this is just a strategy for him to have an excuse to try to get traded or or try to get a pay. You know what I mean? A pay increase somewhere else or a better contract. Or, but when you think of it like that, and you're right, mm-hmm. what team in this climate is going to want to take that on? How do you think, how is it going to make sense that you're going to get more money from another team when you had one of the worst records in the NFL this season and you came at the owner of, I need you to do more for social justice in the time that we're in right now where everything's already in flames? Who the fuck's going to pay you more? Let me ask you this. What, what do you think would be a bigger liability to an NFL franchise? Would it be somebody like a, a Deshaun Watson who is like demanding that their owner does more for social justice? Or let's just say you had, let's just say you had a, another black quarterback who was like, he got an American flag patch. He's, I mean, he always got the flag in his locker. Like he's always, I pledge, he's always standing, you know, even though he's against social injustice. You, you see what I'm getting yeah. at? Like, I guess you don't see enough of that. You know how you know the way um man, what's homeboy's name? He was at Seattle, the running back, funny dude. He's from the Bay Area from Oakland. Mar, uh, uh, oh, Marshawn Lynch. Marshawn Lynch. Okay. I love Marshawn Lynch. Love him. It, he, I think he understood that the game of football and all this entertainment is kind of like pro wrestling. It, the same way I realized that shit when I was in his rap game. Okay. I was like, man, this ain't number wrestling, bro. So, will you could you imagine if if uh, Marshawn Lynch was like hella patriotic 
Mm-hmm. Like not only was he eating Skittles and running a fucking football like a madman and, and shaking his dreads and shit and repping the flag and loving the country. How many more how many more patriots would just get behind him? Yeah. I don't know. I just feel like you don't you don't see enough of these rich dudes that play professional sports love the country and speak up for the country as much as they complain and whine and, and bitch. Like, I don't want to say LeBron is the poster child. <laughs> but he absolutely LeBron is. LeBron is damn near the poster child of, I mean, I get it, man. The world is an unjust place. There's a lot of um, stuff that didn't pan out equally for a lot of communities. And that's that's for a variety of reasons. You know, education, um, shit. Motherfuckers ain't have ice cubes back. You know, the platinum plan, you know, cultural things. And it's just, it's just I mean, hell, we don't got to dig into like, what the fuck's going on in Chicago? Who's yeah. responsible for that? How do we fix the amount of murders in Chicago? That's neither here nor there. But imagine if LeBron was speaking out about Chicago. We need to stop this shit. I'm, I'm flying out there right now, Chicago. Like, you, you got all this outrage, LeBron. How about love the country a little bit more? Maybe more people get behind you. And, I mean, I like that he has a charter school out there in Cleveland. However, the teachers' unions are kind of hurting things like charter schools. But he probably don't want to talk about that. It doesn't fit the narrative and the agenda. It's almost like, LeBron, you might want to vote Republican, brother. <laughs> Which he probably does, as much money as he makes. Yeah, right. Um, but this, this is my point. My point is, I feel like it's damn near epidemic that rich minorities that are in sports, it just seems like nobody in their circle, none of these financial advisors, none of these like rich white folk they kick it with, no one has pulled them aside and explained certain shit, the nuance of these social justice causes. You see what I'm saying? Like, imagine if, uh, you know how Meek Mill kicks it with the owner of the fucking Philly Eagles or whoever the fuck that dude, you know what I'm talking mm-hmm. about? Imagine if, if uh, I think Tim Fertitta's Democrat, but um, I'm trying to come up with an example. Imagine if somebody, a big homie, was in Deshaun Watson's circle. Like, let's just say he was cool with Michael Berry, <laughs> for example. <laughs> and somebody just told Deshaun, like, all right, hey, man, let's, let's discuss this. Before you go public with these demands of, like, the owner of the team doesn't do enough for social causes and I want to leave. Could you maybe tell me first, Deshaun, like, what specifically? Well, everything, you know, police brutality and this and that. Okay, well, let's talk about each one and f- make sure we further understand it and look at, do you know both sides of the argument, uh, Deshaun? You know what I'm saying? Are you well-versed in, like, which is your main thing you see wrong? Well, I just don't like how, you know, inequality or unemployment. Okay, let's talk about that. I don't know. Yeah, there's not enough uh, clarity in what exactly you, like you, they, not you, but they mm-hmm. want uh, when it comes to these kind of things. They just make these like crazy demands and almost at some point it's like, do they just want the attention? You know, that they suck the season so they're like, how do I get in the news? How do I get some, some you know, some fucking uh, buzz behind me? That could be one of the things. I don't really think they care. A lot of them, some of them absolutely have to, right? Just based off numbers and statistics, some of them do really care. Others, I have to think, is just an attention grab, you know? Um, and earlier when you're talking about what other, like, minority quarterbacks or famous players are doing more for, like, pro-patriot, pro-country, yeah. that's a good question. Because I, I mean, other than J.J. Watt, who also, I think by force, because he's also so big in in celebrity that he has to, like, kind of sway left, but he is very, runs out with the flag, drives an F-150 and does Ford commercials, very Texas conservative you would think on its face but the way that he leans you know politically maybe out out loud on like, social like, media oh what like what kind of stuff well it, again he will never say anything direct at least mm-hmm. i haven't read anything but you could just decipher it a little bit and i'm not trying to mind read or anything but you know it again he's not very outspoken the way you're saying like an outspoken patriotic celebrity uh football player or, or celebrity yeah. like uh, or athlete i don't know i mean can you imagine an unapologetic like patriotic football player like a colby covington in the nfl i mean i mean yeah i mean obviously you don't got to be posting anti-biden memes all day right or nothing like that leave that to the comedians yeah leave (laughs) that to me but um i don't know i i I feel like they're probably scared especially in the nba there's probably people that are like let me just shut the fuck up 
and dribbled his ball and not piss off China. So here was another one uh, from this journalist, I say. Tom Brady could have used his platform to wear a mask and be a role model but and be for responsible behavior, but no, he had to be a mask hole. Hashtag Super Bowl, right? And then somebody replied, he did use his platform, you just didn't like the message. Get over it. Yeah, I like that response. That's a great response. Yeah, because he was saying... I mean, shit. Again, if you're not up on somebody, you're not you're not gonna have a whole bunch of viral load. You know what I'm saying? I'm not a virologist, but at the same time, shit. If Tom Brady ain't huddled up with motherfuckers, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, they' about to be up on each other anyway on the field. <laughs> so, yeah, actually, I, I mean, I've actually found the one that I wanted to make an example of earlier when you said about uh, you know minority. Uh, athletes or whatever but there was a Mahomes one that I, I screenshotted so Pat Mahomes is everything that Kaepernick isn't this is obviously somebody that had some facts that other journalists mm-hmm. didn't including being a champion he walked to the sidelines so he walks to the sidelines before the game knelt and prayed then stands for the anthem and then his off time builds houses for veterans works with mentally challenged kids and is for police he's a great role model absolutely yeah, yeah is so any of that shit highlighted about Pat Mahomes I've heard I've heard that he's like pro police and things like that but but really, I think the key there is that the other blue checkmark person conflated Kaepernick with Mahomes because they're trying to force this narrative yeah. of, OK, you got the white boy. That's what they're trying to do. That's how I saw it. They're like, this is the white boy to play golf with Trump. He don't wear a mask. And then you got the other kid that, you know, is mixed or something. And we're just going to say he's just like Kaepernick. It's like, no, he's not. He's not just like Kaepernick, and I think it's racist that you trying to bundle all black quarterbacks, to, you know, with textured hair, partially black quarterbacks with a little bit of texture in the hair together. Yeah. There so was... even if you combine Kaepernick and Mahomes, you probably still don't even got half a black dude. That's funny. There was a. I don't want to name the comedians out. I actually don't even know their names, but black comics are doing a show. Must have been right after the Super Bowl. Um, must have been that night, late, like late show. But anyway. This is just me talking here. Producer Rob, this isn't Jingo's words or messages or anything, but there, this doesn't help the cause of the climate of the world right now when you have uh, black comics talking about this damn motherfucking Tom Brady won again. This boy, this white boy ain't done nothing but win. Let's get this white motherfucker out the NFL so that we can have someone else win. And you keep going with the, this damn white boy wins again. This damn white boy has it all. And the crowd's loving it. The crowd's loving it. Just a, just a comedy show you yeah, went yeah. to? Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. It, it was uh, comics that I follow. They were doing a show post-Super Bowl. Oh, okay. Okay, okay and, and they got an audience, and the audience is going wild. They love it. But it, again, it's like, if we're going to keep using the race card about everything... Well, you know what it is, Rob? The only people you allowed to make fun of is white people. A hundred percent. That's the only thing, because they done fucked up comedy... Um, by making it to where, like, don't make fun of Mexicans. Only make fun of the white man. Especially they straight white male. That's the that's the salt of the earth. You know what I mean? Like, I, I mentioned that to John Burke this morning. I was like, bro, I'm glad I'm not white. I was like, I'm so happy I'm not white. <laughs> I said, because I have more freedom of speech now. There's a lot of stuff y'all can't say. People hate when you say that, too. They're it's like, true. Yeah, It's true. I'd rather have you call me uh, Uncle Tom, coconut trader sellout. But it's a little bit harder to call me racist. It's a little bit harder to call me white supremacist. They'll try to dismiss me as crazy. Like, oh, he's obsessed. Um, you know, he, he's paranoid. He's talking about China every five minutes or, or whatever. This dude's weird. That's cool. But you can't call me a Nazi and a fucking white supremacist and a racist. Stupid. Stupid. You ran out of insults. There's so many good... Uh, I didn't screenshot the rest of them. There was so many, so many good things being... <clears throat> put out there after the Super Bowl and uh I screwed out some of those because they were interesting but I you know I just kind of brought them up to see to get your your perspective and your thoughts on it just a wild Sunday evening oh they made a big deal about um I heard also a lot of the blue checkmark people were tripping like as to how packed it looked even though it was like a lot of cut oh, the out. stadium yeah it was a lot of cutouts and I'm like well I wish it was packed because that that shit gave me hope I'm like okay maybe we're getting through this thing and I think it was like 20. 20,000? Okay. Whereas uh, that stadium holds 66, I think. So it was about a third. So, but yeah, I actually saw one too where I was like, oh, damn it, I got to find this one. Uh, it was actually, I think, Dan Rather. 
Dan Rather, who's uh, an anchor for, or was an anchor for NBC or MSNBC or something, mm-hmm. had uh, said, had he, had, he went as far to say that even seeing the commercials with people that didn't have masks w- could be deemed irresponsible and they should have had commercials with people wearing masks. Are you serious? Bro, I lost it laughing. Dan Rather? Oh, I'd rather slap the shit out of you. <laughs> Dan. <sighs> ah, ya con sus pinches mamadas, hombre. Golly, man. God, man, get off Tom Brady's nuts. Stop crying and complaining. Man, y'all fucking up. Y'all just fucking up the world. Y'all making it, y'all making it miserable, man. We can't laugh. Can't do shit. You're, the commercial gotta be wearing a fucking mask. Like... Get off the boo boo already! All right, it is 2021. Your guy won. Y'all about to y'all about to crucify Trump just so y'all can impeach us. Y'all want to impeach half the country over Trump? Uh, second of all, the weekend. I, I've been a fan of the well. I was a fan of the weekend when he first, first, first stepped on the scene back when he was still repping Canada. Uh, when you didn't even know what he looked like, you didn't know his name was Abel. He still had the little dreads and shit, the little big ass locks, mm-hmm. and um, the beats were crazy. His little singing style was crazy. It had effects on it. It was catchy. It had like a vibe to it. Yeah, it like, like an ominous vibe. To yeah, it. I, it had I a dug vibe it. to it. Like man, you, man, you about to clean out, man? Put shit. It's Friday. Put the weekend on. Light some candles. What you got? You this maybe back when uh, me and Mighty Soul were dating. Oh, Mighty Soul finna come up. Put put the weekend, dude. On. That's what I used to do too. You know what I'm? Come on, that's Rob. fucking hilarious. Come on, Rob. You know, put the old weekend on. Yeah. And then, you know, he started blowing up, getting more mainstream, got a little record deal, did songs with Drake, songs with Future. And by then, I was just kind of like, all right, okay, cool. Weekend, you made it. You don't need my fandom yeah. anymore. Uh, and then, and then of course, you know, okay, I'm happy for him that he's going global and like pop and like ultra commercial with his new sound, that little 80s uh, vaporwave type of vibe. And I'm like, okay, the beats are cool. But then they announced him as a halftime performer, and everybody knows the weekend. He really only good in the studio, you know, because outside of the studio, he's just Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. <laughs> in the studio, they got computers and shit, and they could fix him up, make him sound dope. But uh, as a performance, bro, dude, I had it time on. And it didn't grab my attention fast enough, so I didn't watch it. It's very, I mean, I mean, bro, I mean, you, when I think Super Bowl halftime. What do you think? Tell me. I mean, look, I grew up in the 80s, bro. So I'm thinking Super Bowl halftime, it's got to be big. Obviously, you got your Beyonce's, your J-Lo's, your Shakita's, your like big rock bands, you know, big classic, like, you know. Obviously, you know, Justin Timberlake, Janet Jackson, she showed her titty. She took it for the team. She's like, Justin, you ready? <laughs> Boom. Popped the titty out. Bam. FCC went crazy. Everybody lost their mind. Uh, you got to have some surprises. It just has to be like a performer. Michael Jackson is a performer. Prince is a performer. The Weeknd. Bruno Mars. Oh, Bruno Mars. That Mar- one was excellent. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. Bring an accordion, a harmonica, a set of drums, and Bruno going to kill it. Uh, he got his band and shit. Yeah, Bruno, that's a performer since he was a little kid. Not not hating on the weekend, but it's like, bro, you should have had you some backup. You should have been like, all right, can it be the weekend and friends? <laughs> the weekend and vacation? Somebody. Uh, you know he spent $7 million of his own money on that? Where'd it go? How do you, what do you, what For the he, production. What did he spend it on? Like For the, the production. The set and the, the extras? That's, that's just what it, I, I read. That's just... He so to make up for the budget that wasn't there for the halftime show, he invested or spent seven million dollars of his own money. Now he spent that. That wasn't on investment. Well, hundred percent. Considering that um, everybody's making fun of it, like nobody thought it was good. I say nobody, but I mean the majority. He's gonna make it back, and uh, I mean we're sitting here talking about him. We are, yeah. Yeah, he's got a tour coming. He's got music and shit coming. I had just told you the day before too. His world tour, I think, twenty twenty two. You know, everybody can start planning for their uh, their road dates now since the weekend announced it. And I hope so. Shit, Naples. See you this Wednesday. West Palm this Thursday. And we got a whole lot more dates coming. Chingobling dot com. Uh, my buddy Joseph, who just left, he's like, "Hey, so uh, you're going to Florida, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." He's like, so is this like you're kicking off the tour? Is this like the beginning of the tour? I was like, Joseph, I don't fucking know. I was like, I just did College Station. Was that the kickoff? I mean, I mean, I, I sporadically 
here and there got to do a couple things. I was like, were those the kickoff? I was like, I don't know, Joe. I have no, f- I don't know what's the kickoff. I don't know. I don't know. I might be in, is this the middle? Is this the end? I have no fucking clue. Poor Joe's like, am I getting yelled at right now? I just, I'm just asking, is it the kickoff? Yeah. I mean, how do you feel about comedy this year? Based off what you've seen and what's been able to have been planned so far? Well, I mean, because people are asking, man, when are you coming to LA? When are you coming to uh, when, wherever? When is LA going to open? Facts. I don't know. They say it's slightly opening. Uh, I don't know. Some people, some people are like, oh, it's wide open now. Uh, I have no idea. So, you know, we have some dates coming up, but the way everything's looking with the chaos of like, uh, there might be a variant. Uh, the vaccine doesn't really. You can still catch the shit twice. Uh, you can still spread it even with a vaccine. You still got a social distance. It, it's almost like is entertainment and all that type of shit coming back ever? Like when? You know, I we all have to. We have to follow the uh, <clears throat> Chappelle Rogan blueprint of you know having people test before the show, get there super early, man. Uh, how do you get a hold of them tests like that? You just like, what do you do? Hire, call a, a nurse or some shit? Yeah, you got to hire a provider. I don't know. I, that'd be interesting. I wonder if clubs now are going to have to work with, let's just call them ready clinics, you know, ready clinics that are close by that can come and provide. I mean, you have to guess what? A small theater for acts like that? Like if they go on the road, like they're doing stubs. And I actually said, I think stubs has like a 400 seater or something like that. Mm. So what's a typical theater? It's about four or 500 seats, right? Like a small theater? Uh, theaters vary. I think theaters tend to be larger than four or 500. Okay, but just let's just take five, mm-hmm. like half of that, right? Mm-hmm. And you got to get all those people tested, like rapid tested before the show. If the show is at six, seven, you're going to have to get there, what, two or three hours early maybe to get everybody tested and then in the door? <sighs> Man. And then you still got to wear your mask. And it stuff just sounds like a logistical fucking nightmare. Yeah, when you got them bags like Rogan did and Chappelle does, then maybe you can work that into your deal. But mm-hmm. all these other comics that we're fans of that, you know, do the road or just started doing the road and started catching audiences, how in the hell are they going to be able to tour like that? I have no idea. And that's why I need the patrons. <laughs> Show love. Patreon.com forward slash Red Pill Tamales. Um, you know, if, if, if y'all enjoy this talk, this type of talk, this type of conversation, this type of dialogue and so forth, please tell a friend. Thank you for being a patron. Please tell a friend because I'm trying to figure out what the fuck I'm going to be doing with my life. You know what I'm saying? Because look, although it's going to be an entertaining four years in this administration, Shit, I'm going to be 45 by the time this this old geezer is out, by the time Biden is out of it, or Harris or whoever takes over. Um, and then, motherfucker, the tour's all fucked off. So I'm over here just thinking like, okay, well, shit, if people don't, if people aren't down with the red pill tamales, shit. We should have our own incubator. Like this, the, the TIA should be its own um, hedge fund, you know, its own uh, incubator, its own tank, its own shark tank, the Jingo tank, right? Or you ever watch Shark Tank? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, where, you know, people pitch ideas that might be mm-hmm. like actual uh, potential businesses and shit. Shit. TIA coming up. I don't know, man. Something. Something. Though. Y'all just not going to see me for a while. Um, <laughs> like just last re- night. Retreat to the tunnels. Well, like last night when I did the Lexit interview. I did it in the house, right? Because I was worried about the Wi-Fi and shit back here. So I went in the house. I went in the bedroom. I set up a little tripod, a light. I put the phone. And um, obviously, when you're when you're zooming in to someone else's show, you want to be animated with the banter. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't want to be like, "Hey guys, uh, thanks for having me on, but uh, my family's in the other room and the baby's taking a bath, and I don't want to." So I'm just like talking. Yeah. So when I was done, my wife come, comes in the room. She's like, hey, how'd it go? Da, da, da. I went good. It was fun. She's like, oh, I was like, man, why is he so loud? Why is he getting so passionate? Almost like you need to calm down <laughs> type of thing. And I'm like, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I, it's you know, it's supposed to be like radio, like banter. I was like, I got to be somewhat hype. Yeah. And then I got in my head. I'm like, well, then I hit the weed. Mm. And then I started thinking, well, am I going too deep into this shit? Like... Is it cool that I'm hopping on other people's thing and I'm I'm reminding people about all the bullshit that Biden is doing and reminding people how the propaganda, the mainstream media works and how motherfuckers will lie to our face and be like, oh, no, we're not going to ban fracking and turn around ban fracking. Oh, uh, we're not. We're going to get them kids out them cages and then go buy more cages. 
So I'm like, do I need to just shut the fuck up? Because I understand some of the basic liabilities of of all this talking that I'm doing. For example, you don't want to get sued for defamation. You don't want to say nothing bad about nobody to where they could sue you for defamation of character. That's number one. You don't want legal problems. Um, Two, are you going to set off enough alarms to where they really doxing you and people Antifa really showing up at your house and you, you you know what I'm saying? Now you got to shoot motherfuckers. (laughs) That's two, right? You don't, how, how, how much are you willing to rock the boat? Because sometimes it feels like I'm, I know I'm not the only one, right? There's like 75 million people, but sometimes it feels like I'm damn near one of the only ones. It just feels that way. Maybe because on the Brown side, you know, you got the Lexit crew and, and so on, but it's like, all right, y'all, I'm getting tired of catching all these arrows by myself. <laughs> and then, and then this is where the weed kicked in. Yeah. Then I start thinking, hey, man, if they really about to crucify Trump in order to impeach all of us, and they're trying to conflate uh, everybody that rushed up in the Capitol, and even if you didn't rush up in the Capitol, y'all damn near the same, and all y'all insurrectionists. And then I start thinking, is China laying down the, the groundwork and the game plan? Like, I know we're already being surveilled, but I was like, am I really going to the gulags? You know, however they say, it? am I going to the FEMA camps? So I'm like, you know what? Let me shut the fuck up and just get, you know, go to trade school and learn how to be a, a motherfucking carpenter, plumber, electrician or something and call this shit a day. Start watching a bunch of uh, Mike Rowe videos. Oh, what does he do? Like he sh- the dirty jobs guy, uh-huh. uh, like trades and, you know, plumber. But or- does he show you how to do the shit? He he had the, sh- the dirty jobs was a show where he would go and he would like do those things and you know talk about people that made businesses or careers lives out of that kind of stuff like yeah. we're talking about this kind of with my soul and Marissa like some people need the Gary V type of you know in your face oh, you're gonna be an entrepreneur this is what you got to do and other people need like Mike Rowe that's like look you can go find yourself a trade you can get really good at that you can start as an apprentice you can work your way up in the company start your own company and it's like a lot more. It's uh, it there's steps to it, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. When you want to do what you wanted to do, or what I even aspire to do, outside of the the this is where you start and this is where you could poten- potentially end, mm-hmm. it's a lot more murky. Like you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Mm-hmm. You're kind of just, man, bro. I was preaching to Joseph today about trade schools, and um, just because it it came up, but it it even came up this morning with John Burke. Okay, so in a nutshell. I went and got a marketing degree. I went and got in all this debt from a fr- fancy little private university or whatever. And it's kind of like marketing degree. Okay, okay, well, fuck. What you going to do with that? Now I realize that. Where it's like, what you going to do with that? Yeah. Marketing. Okay, so what? what is that? You're just going to, you know, let's say when I was fresh out of college, it would have been like, okay, see if anybody's hiring in the marketing department per se and what is that exactly right it's like oh you know it's marketing it's kind of like creative kind of like advertising you got to learn how to persuade people to sell them stuff but a trade school you don't go to school as long you don't get in as much debt you pay that shit back in a year or two because you're making bread and you know how to do a useful skill so i'm almost lobbying that we need to make that shit as cool as possible like you know i have daughters I'm going to encourage them like, hey, don't go to no fucking bullshit liberal arts, get indoctrinated, getting all this debt when you might want to have you a nice little trade where it's like, no, I, I know how to do this. So like, let's just say if I knew how to uh, be an electrician or something, it, it'd be like, OK, tour slow. Fuck it. I can go do this. Boom, boom, boom. I can do my own shit. I'm going to fix this. Boom, boom, boom. But it's like I got to hire somebody for that. <laughs> I don't know how to do that shit. I know how to talk shit. But the the shit talking clubs, you know, the comedy clubs are closed. So, and it is cool though that with the internet, we you could still take those skills and figure out what to do with them, right? And also with somebody like yourself who's got, who's got, you know, not only the intelligence to put pieces together, but you have the you know you know people and you know how things work and you know how this could be something or that could be something and maybe when you hit that CBD you can start to get even more ideas and you're like oh wait okay I know it's daunting when I'm not on the CBD but once I hit it I'm like ah there's something there and there's something there and I just gotta mm-hmm. you know take it take my time because you try and I know how it goes like you try to dump, jump on everything at once and you're like overwhelmed and it's like you're back to square one yeah especially in these uncertain times where it's like mm, okay well is it that business pandemic proof. 
You know what I'm saying? Is that business pandemic proof? You got to think that people are thinking that more now than ever, like forever now. Like you have to think now, could this be something that continues to happen every two to three years or every five years, even every 10 years? Look here. God forbid they release a virus that gets transmitted via mosquito. If you really want to fuck somebody up, man, that means you really can't leave your house. If you live in Houston, Texas... Your kids can't go to the park. They can't go outside. If there's a scary disease that's like out there and it's being spread where, where the mosquito is the vector. But if you take this, uh, this you know, vaccination that makes you uh, like have repellent in your skin so you don't have any mosquitoes around, then you can do whatever you want. Is that a thing? No, man. I mean, it might be. And they might be working on it right now as we speak. Maybe we're on to something. Is it true that I, this might be a tough question? Is it true that hydroxychloroquine they're finding that it kind of works. Yeah. I was actually listening to a doctor on the show <laughs> talk about this was, and again, the, the hearsay, I'm, I'm summarizing it here, but hydroxychloroquine apparently has been used forever. It's been something that's been around for a long yeah, time. Yeah, for malaria. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's not, it wasn't unknown that it could and potentially it, and, help. And it wasn't dangerous either. Right. That's why Trump was promoting it because from a, um, what is the word? From a risk, man, what's the word I'm looking for? Risk analysis, I forget. Uh, risk aversion or um, risk? Basically like... Like pros and cons? In a way, yeah. yeah. Basically, long story, in a nutshell. Because it's like, it's been around. It's not deadly or harmful. Mm-hmm. It's not unproven. It's cheap. And it could work. And that's what he was saying. He was like, I, ha- you know, I have a lot of faith in it. You know, I hear, I hear wonderful things. Many, many people say, and it's, you know, it's shown and it's been around forever. And and they, what do they do? What does the mainstream media do? Do they worry about what might be best for the American people, or are they more focused on making him look like a fucking nut job? B. That's your fucking answer. So it sure would be a shame if they found out later that oh, this could have, this is what China was doing all along. You know what I'm saying? Or this is how these countries had such a low, or I'm just, I'm speculating. But if that was the case, ooh, the media, you got some splaining to do. And even then, do they though? Or is it just going to be, if they're oh, yeah. the one controlling the narrative, what are they going to explain? They're just going to swipe it on the, sweep it yeah. on the rug. And, and, and if OAN or Newsmax post, like says something about it, and then you try to spread the word, they're going to say, come on, Chingo, those aren't real news. Put something real. What the fuck is this QAnon shit? Yeah, I remember I was listening to a doctor talk about she was uh, seeing a, a patient, right? It was a her, it was a practice where there was a bunch of doctors around or whatever, mm-hmm. and uh, the lady had come in with COVID type of symptoms and, and whatever. So I think she was using it as a preventative. Like if you use it, early, the earlier you use it, the better. It likely it'll it'll be to help you if you do catch uh, COVID or whatever. So she gives it to the the patient. Almost just like nothing because she had been, she's used it. She knows what it was for. She knows how like tried and tested it or tested and tried that it mm-hmm. is. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I guess a superior in the clinic caught wind that she had used it and it had helped her in like a day or two. She was, she was back to normal, right? Basically threatened her license or her ability to see patients in this office because they, they're, they weren't wanting to just use hydroxychloroquine like that all willy nilly like. So she was like, Was uh, it because it was politicized or? Well, because i guess it was because it was politicized but she was making it seem like because they knew it worked Mm. and they didn't just want to use something that was going to work so immediately when there's there was like procedures to like well you know you need to have this vaccine or you need to you know take these other steps before you just go give somebody i don't know hydroxychloroquine and it's just like yeah that sounds so that sounds really dark and ominous like are they really but we hear stories all the time of professionals talking about that kind of stuff this year was the year of disinformation where as quickly as you could pull up a study mm-hmm. that says, oh, that shit was buzzing that, that, the whole time. Not the whole time. It started, it, there's so many outlets in here uh-huh. and they're tied to the same circuits. That's that fan of energy, right? Yeah, there. that's what it is. So this year was the year of like, you could quickly find a study that shows hydroxychloroquine works. And then you could, two seconds, I mean, you could just as quickly find studies that, that are like, no, it does not work. But, motherfuckers aren't scientists people aren't scientists so they rely upon the media and whoever else right joe rogan like who who else how yeah. so some of these studies people that were up on game they'd be able to pick apart like okay 
okay, this one, they they gave them the hydroxychloroquine too late or they didn't put the zinc with it because it's supposed to be zinc, hydroxychloroquine, something else. Yeah. Um, or they gave it to the patients when they were already about to die or, um, you know, these people had comorbidities or, you know, just there's so many variables. And unfortunately, who ends up losing and missing out? The public. Because it's almost like, it's like on purpose, they want us to be fucking confused. That's what it seems like. I don't know. I, I don't own stock in hydroxychloroquine or anything. I'm not over here trying to be a hydroxychloroquine crusader. You know what I'm saying? I'm just talking about how unfortunate it is that, um, that we can't even get a straight answer. You know what I'm saying? Like, as we've already discussed, many people believe it to work. It's been around. It's affordable. It's not expensive like the other one. There was a time when a bunch of Democrats were promoting remdesivir. It mm-hmm. was another drug. Yeah. And it's almost like, what fucking country are we living in where if you're Democrat, you all about, you're looking for the remdesivir. And if you're Republican or Trump supporter or whatever, you're looking for the hydrochloroquine. Right. And it's like, give me the shit that works. And meanwhile, they're lying, talking about, he said, drink bleach. And I'm like, God damn. I mean, I would respect CNN more. In the mainstream media more, if they had said, all right, guys, he didn't he didn't really say drink bleach. However, we're not 100 percent happy with some of the things that they've been doing in terms of covid response. And like just more honest and it, it just turns people off once they figure out and realize, wait, he really didn't say drink bleach. But y'all are fucking regurgitating and spewing this shit and creating all this programming. And you got uh, Anderson Cooper. And all these people just talking heads. You know what I mean? It's like, it's not productive. Y'all just sitting here trying to confuse us more, divide us more. I'm really starting to think the media, y'all are the enemy of the people. And when Trump first said it, it's kind of like, ah, oh, you fucking asshole. These are the journalists. They supposed to be holding truth to power. And You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's uh, let's continue this conversation and segue into part two because since you're going to be in Florida, which mm-hmm. we, during one of our regular recording days, listeners can catch second part of this episode. We'll keep talking about some of these subjects and then some of the other shit that we have to bring up on Friday's episode. So right now, a public episode's done and we're shifting into Patreon mode. Peace.